What's going on guys? Andrew of Newbark Gaming here, back here today with some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Varane's discussion. We're going to be reviewing episode 67 today, and it's been a while. Last time I actually did this, the channel was still going under the name Yam Yusaku, but I decided to change it to Newark Gaming just because I think it fits the overall aesthetic I'm going for a bit more, but more on that potentially at a different time. Let's dive right into this episode. So it's been a bit since I've talked about this, so sorry if I seem a little bit scattered all over the place. I'm going to be trying to funnel my points down somewhat. So starting in the beginning here, this episode's basically about finishing up the duel between the Earth Ignis, which we're, I guess we're just calling Earth, and uh, Yusaku. Personally, I think that's probably my least favorite of the uh, different elemental Ignis names we've gotten so far. I like the fact that I is I and his doesn't just pertain to the element. Flame at least sounds a little bit better than like just fire, considering that's the attribute of monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! versus Earth is the attribute of the monsters and the element of the Ignis. Just feels a little too generic to me. Flame has kind of an edginess to it, and then you have Aqua for the water Ignis, which of course the Earth Ignis suggested that name. And I I think it's rather fitting. Now, speaking of Aqua, that does seem to be a primary driving factor in the Earth Ignis's motivations. He seems to be very smitten with her and will basically take whatever side she takes. And that can be both a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, part of me thinks it's rather sweet that he's so attached to her and very protective of her. Um, he had the uh, G Golem Crystal Heart that he was protecting with everything he had, and the other G Golem that we can assume was supposed to be representative of him and his character and how it was always protecting her. Once more, I think it's very sweet that he's willing to do that, but at the same time, sometimes that can be a little bit of a bad thing for a character in that it means he lacks some degree of his own independence and decision making and such. But I don't fall under the impression from the little bit we've seen of Aqua so far that she's a negative and manipulative enough character that she would try and take advantage of that. So I don't think it'll necessarily spin in a bad direction. Now that being said, in this episode and last episode, Playmaker seemed to have come to the conclusion that the Earth Ignis, based on the way he was behaving, very much coincides with the character Spectre. That could potentially explain his awkwardness in some ways in dealing with the other Ignises and the fact that Spectre, you know, growing up felt very isolated and alone a lot of times, and that caused him to turn into a character that probably is rather dark and most likely is the reason that he, you know, is rather uh, antagonistic like he is at the moment, versus when, you know, if he would have developed an area where he had friends, he wasn't so alone all the time, it's very possible he could have developed into a better person. I am personally still holding out faith that Spectre's gonna come around and be more of an anti-hero type of character further in, or maybe even a full-on hero. It fits the general theming of Yu-Gi-Oh that we've seen with numerous characters in the past that have started off very antagonistic, while also managing to fit a logical character story arc for a typical shonen anime, and the fact that he's tied to an Ignis, and given the way the story is developing so far, the Ignises seem to me like they're going to end up united against a single cause, and I'm not very much under the impression that the Earth Ignis is going to be our primary antagonist, so if it is indeed tied, if the Earth Ignis is indeed tied to Spectre, and they all end up needing to unite with their Ignises, I really don't think Spectre is going to end up being a primary antagonist either. I think it's another, like, preliminary antagonist type of thing. I'm, the further we get into the brains, the more I'm under the impression it's kind of like Zexel, where we have all of these little arcs that are gradually dropping hints towards the bigger issue at play here, particularly considering they're gradually introducing us more and more into this um, woman who seems to be in charge of soul technologies to some extent. She has these little meetings with Akira and she seems extremely cold-hearted, concerned with money, concerned with productivity, etc. I have a feeling there may be something more to that. I find it very unlikely that the show would keep introducing us to her if she's not going to end up going somewhere. So when it comes to the main antagonist little tangent I'm going on here, I think Soul's going to end up being there at some point. Anyway, back to the whole Earth Ignis bit though. If he is indeed tied to Spectre, then I think at some point we're gonna have to have an introduction between those two characters. That could be that could be very interesting to watch. The other reason I think it's um, interesting that he's tied to Spectre is if you look at Aqua and the way that her character's kind of developed um, in terms of like the shaping of her Ignis and whatnot, it very much resembles Owie with the pigtails and like the skirt type of an outline going on, which once more falls in line with Owie's character. Even, oh, to, I mean, not so much now that she's switched away from Blue Angel, but we haven't had any other characters introduced so far that necessarily could tie to that Aqua Ignis other than maybe Emma, considering those two are kind of our primary female leads at this point. And I really don't think either of them go with it. And then there, of course, there's the female Knight of Hanoi too, but there's like no resemblance whatsoever there. And I feel like with Spectre, and I, I'm not trying to call things too early here, 
possibly a slight chance even like revolver still by some crazy twist of events we've already kind of gotten a character that plays the role of i'm the villain but i'm still tied to the allies of our main protagonists and that's going to be a twist somewhere so i don't think we need another character to play that role in the female knight of hanoi whose name i'm still blanking on Anyway, moving back to the uh, whole thought of Aoi being tied in there. Notice when Spectre and Aoi dueled before that Spectre did seem to show a good amount of interest in Aoi. He was still very much on that somewhat sociopathic and twisted train of thought in the way she was he was manipulating her, but he did seem to connect to her to some extent in the way he kept going back to that story about the Blue Angel and how both of them weren't really all that different. It was like he was trying to reach out and connect to somebody again. Notice how his Ignis and Aqua, if it does end up being tied to Aoi, could also have a connection there. And then you also have the fact that Aqua seems to be attached to who? I, if there is any accuracy behind that. Earth seemed to pick up on it and I did as well, and I could kind of see it, depends on how you want to interpret the writing. Um, Aoi does seem to show some attachment to Playmaker, who ties in with I. So between all that, if you put those pieces together, it kind of makes sense for Aqua to end up being tied to Aoi. And but at the same time, there's also the fact that the other Ignises we've so seen so far, the attribute that they represent, their uh, human counterpart's deck also represents that element. Yeah, Yusaku, all of his deck isn't necessarily dark monsters, but a lot of his ace monsters are, such as Decode Talker, and then we have um, his new fusion monster, whose name I'm blanking on at this point, etc, etc. Soul Burner, his deck is almost entirely fire attributed, and he's got Flame as his Ignis, and then assuming that the, assumption, the connection between Earth and uh, Spectre turns out to be true, Spectre's deck was plant-based, so we're probably fair to assume those were Earth attributed. Whereas Aqua, well, unless Aoi's gonna undergo a deck change, Trick Stars for the most part are light attributed. That being said, the whole idea of Aoi being tied to an Ignis could still potentially work out given the fact that we do know there exists a light Ignis that's very level-headed and leader-like. And with that being the case, I mean, maybe if you want to go more the deck attribute theory route that would make sense but based on the personalities we've seen unfolding amongst the Ignises, i definitely think aqua is a better fit for Ali. but once more we'll have to see how all of that plays out so back to the general prospects of the episode yusaku does end up managing to overcome earth in this duel and one key point when he overcomes him is earth keeps questioning the relationship between i and yusaku and this is the first episode where we actually see yusaku acknowledge that he does view i as a partner even if it is somewhat of a forced relationship his main point is that hey we have the same objectives we have a mutual enemy and as a result that's going to force us to work together so if you want to call us partners because we're working at by choice then so be it and coming from a character that's very edgy, very loner-like, heck, he doesn't even acknowledge Kusanagi as more than an acquaintance in this episode. Granted, that could also do, be due to slightly poor translating. I'm not really sure. I mean, for the most parts, the translations have seemed like they're correct, but, you know, you never know. Um, but with that being the case, if he doesn't even acknowledge Kusanagi as more than an acquaintance, him acknowledging I as a um, partner, that's pretty significant coming from someone along those lines. It very much strikes me as uh, playing makers coming to view them as actually being friends. I think the only one who he fully considers maybe a friend at this point is a soul burner, but the fact that he didn't even call Kusanagi more than an acquaintance makes me even question that relationship to some extent. So with where we're going here, we did get a sneak peek at the end of this episode that was basically showing us we're going to see a meeting between Windy and I again. One of the main points throughout the entire side or the entire discussion between Yusaku and Earth in this entire duel and I and Earth in this entire duel was that the Cyverse world is going to basically fold in on itself at some point here, but they weren't clear on how. The way that they keep wording it, it's coming across to me like what they're getting at is the world's going to be divided and the eyes are going to end up fighting each other. Or I'm sorry, AIs are going to end up fighting each other. So with that being the case, it seems like the direction they're heading with the plot is you're going to see the AIs take two sides. There's one side that's going to end up taking the shape that Revolver fears all of them will take, that wants to destroy humanity and doesn't see the possibility of them coexisting. And then there's also going to be the other side that works together with humans and sees coexistence as being a good thing. That being said, the fact that I is going to meet with Windy, it seems like I and possibly and probably Flame are our main advocates of working together at this point. We don't know anything about the Light Ignis, 
and we can assume Aqua and Earth are kind of on the fence from the little bit we've seen of them. So the fact that I's meeting with Wendy strikes me as Wendy's kind of the primary voice at this point of the we can't work with humans type of camp, and that they're going to be sort of trying to hash this out to some extent. So we'll have to see how that unfolds. Um, I'm going to be curious to see what happens with the uh, Ignises that have a, they obviously all have uh, human counterparts. I'm curious to see what happens with those that seek to destroy humanity and their human counterparts when they don't seek to work with their human counterparts at all. From everything we've seen of the Ignises that have identified their humans so far, they've ended up going along with them, Flame and Aya and uh, I being those only two. So we'll just have to wait and see how all that unfolds. So with all being said, yeah, I think that about wraps up my thoughts about this episode. What side do you think all the Ignises are going to end up on at the end of this? Well, um, what do you think is going to end up between Earth and Spectre? Are we going to see Spectre eventually have a change of heart? Is Aqua tied to Owie, or am I just pulling a bunch of theories out of my rear end? That would certainly be nothing new. It's kind of what I was known for to some extent. At least I like to think that way. Um, is Wendy representing the other side? or And is maybe one of the AIs trying to force the conflicts between them to spark this work because maybe they see something beneficial out of it? After all, when we have had encounters with Bowman, one of the main things we've seen is this kind of giant light thing over it. And given the way we've seen I be able to portray himself as these kind of dark creatures from time to time, such as when he absorbed the data, I think it was way back around like episode 20 or so from Defeated Knight of Hanoi, you have to ask yourself, maybe that's the Light Ignis. We haven't seen a whole lot of the Light Ignis so far. And uh, I was always referencing how he couldn't really understand the Light Ignis because it was super smart. Sometimes in shows like this, super smart does end up translating to being manipulative. Perhaps the Light Ignis is the main, you know, um, advocate for fighting against humans. We'll just have to wait and see how all of it unfolds. So far, I can tell you guys, I'm enjoying Season 2 a lot more than Season 1 for Ains. Part of the reason I ended up falling off those reviews for a bit is I was feeling very shaky about the show. But anyway, after a bit of a all-over-the-place catching you guys up on where I'm at with things type of video and review of this episode, I'll catch you guys next time on some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns reviews.